Hello everyone and welcome to High Frequency Trading System Design Architecture Series. My name is Bosch and I'm thrilled to have you join me on this journey into the fascinating world of high frequency trading. In this series, we will deep dive into the intricate design and architecture of high level frequency trading systems, exploring the key components, technologies and strategies that make them and for this particular series, we will be going through one of the in-depth series of blogs by Ariel Slahia, who is a great name when it comes to electronic trading. And we would be referring to his couple of blogs in this particular series. So let's directly deep dive into this. Grab a notebook, get comfortable, and let's dive into the exciting world of high-frequency trading system design architecture. So basically, if we try to understand on a very high level, generally in the high frequency trading systems, we are creating very low, low or ultra low uh, latency systems. And if we try to divide this particular uh, low latency systems and the whole architecture, we divide into six or seven components out of which the first component comes when we are handling the data or the data feed that is coming. And uh, as similar to as most of the component, this is one of the important or critical component of how you are getting the data feed. Because one thing is, uh, the as we all know, the market data should be accurate. And uh, the speed at which we are marking data should be well in confidence level with the different um, competitors that we have out there. And uh, generally, the, for the data feed handler, handler we have this is implemented using the fixed protocol and uh, as like uh, we will be receiving a uh, market update sendings and will be sending order generating by strategies and for fixed engine generally there are two ways of implementing the fixed engine that we have and one is like a, having a custom made engine or or second is having a commercial option custom made is when you define a lot of parameters according to your use cases and the commercial one is the one that you can take off the shelf and directly implement in what you are implementing and uh, generally for the companies that have very high uh, bandwidth in terms of the efforts and the resources they can put in uh, implementing that fixed engine they go with that thing and that optimize the communication according to our use case for low latency environment. <clears throat> for example, we have big, large banks, institutions, very big hedge funds. They might be doing these sets of things. However, the second way is what uh, a lot of companies or a lot of people go with in an industry is a commercial option. And even in the commercial options, there are a lot of good options and you can choose accordingly to which one is the best for you and you just need to plug their library and uh, generally in the data feed handler there are different kinds of latencies that we can expect that is network communication and other than that we also have this decoding or passing latency so we will try to have as low latency as possible if you don't uh, if you i think you have an idea but if you don't understand passing is you can understand it's kind of a string manipulation and since it's a string manipulation sometimes it's very expensive in terms of cpu cycles and memory management uh, and remember one of the biggest things that we are optimizing here is the latency that we have in our whole systems we are trying to make the system as low latency with as low latency as possible and then uh, the second thing is for providing connectivity through newer and better protocol since um, uh, the fix has been a little bit older protocol and a little bit slow as compared to the algorithm the uh, cutting edge algorithms that we have nowadays so fast itch and ouch are binary protocols uh, that are also implemented for a lot of things and people do include them and it's recommended to use them as long as they are available they might use a different engine to communicate, but uh, the concepts uh, behind it remains the same. So if we try to go back in the data feed handler uh, from the 
connection that we have, we are we are receiving the data in the wire. Then we are decoding that information and then passing through the fields, and then we are passing like whatever the data that we have passed through for different uh, cases into the limit order book that we have. So first step was data feed handler. The second component that we have is the limit order book. And it's like when the system's connectivity has its venues, we need to update all the events supported by these systems. The order updates, the adds, deletions, or the trades uh, if needed. And for each event received, we will go to the internal order, order book and make changes that it there needs to be made. So one of the things is if we just try to understand is all the venues send these updates using a unique identifier, unique ID, you can say, entry ID in this case, and update type, whether it's an insert, update, or delete. So you can accurately replicate their limit order book on your side. And if you can see through the pictures, generally what's happening is we have a stream of messages coming through, and we have this uh, order pool or order book you can say there you can add you can see you can update and it's like with time it uh, keeps on changing but uh one of the most important things to keep here in mind is that a lot of times if we are adding or removing something it we can in, like in a normal standard it takes a lot of time so there are a few things that we implement while uh, while we are taking care of this thing is that the best data structure for this thing is to use plain arrays, one for the bits and one for the ask. They provide the best performance when it um, comes to the uh, layman structure of things. And second thing is pre-allocate as much memory as you can because when you are allocating memory dynamically, a lot of times it's very expensive in terms of the time and the whole thing that we are optimizing in this thing is the time the latency so it's recommended that we pre-allocate as much memory as we can dynamic memory as mentioned it's expensive and should not be used in critical parts like updating a limit order book because you might have a, a large amount of overhead per, per allocation and then uh, on the system initialization phase, we pre-allocate uh, these arrays, bid ask, bid arrays, and the uh, ask arrays. And let's say, for example, if we try, if we want to implement this thing uh, for a ten level depth of the book, we can allocate uh, ten elements in bid or ask array. And second thing is remember that we are not going to move or that we are going to move or replace elements, not removing and creating, since if you see it from a, a perspective of the speed of the processes when you're removing an element when you're creating a new element the amount of time the amount of latency it increases in our system is too much so we are going to move or replace these elements so generally like if you want to see like uh, if you want to add something dynamically or if you want to uh, remove something dynamically. It's uh, simple to understand that thing that uh, we do uh, array dot pushback, we do array dot erase, and yeah. So by array here, we are taking vector, and I think that's easily understandable. So the thing that we are going to use here is not pushback or erase, rather, we are going to use these uh, write and replace. I think it's uh, self-understood that uh, we in, the, in the first case, we are allocating that value to the new value that we have. And in the second case, we are removing that particular element, replacing, not removing. So one of the things is, uh, for example, if you're doing this thing for once or twice, the difference is not that much. However, for example, if what um, Ariel has done is he try to show show the sample through 100,000 iterations. And then when you do iterations on a, on a very large scale, at that point of time, you can see a considerable difference. So for example, when he implemented the dynamic uh, uh, pushback and erase from the vector that we had, it took him around 
2500 seconds however when he did the pre allocated things and uh, have things dynamically allocated oh sorry pre allocated not dynamically allocated he can see a 60% difference in how he, they have implemented the same the same set of uh, um, method so yeah uh, that's it and we would try to keep this section very short so let's go back into what we have understood till now is that there were two things uh, when we are designing high frequency trading systems we want to have as low latency as possible and uh, from the compo different components that we have in our architecture we have learned till now two different uh, cases the first is the data field handler which is generally implemented using the fixed protocol and second one the newer protocols that we have the binary protocols the fast itch and out systems so in the cases where uh, if it's available we try to use fast and it's fast itch and out protocol uh, these binary protocols for data feed handler and cases where it's not present we try to go with the fixed protocol then second thing is we try to have we try to implement the limit order book in that particularly the data structure that we generally go with are the simple arrays and in those simple arrays we try to allocate pre allocate as much memory as we can and in this we try to implement two different arrays bid arrays and ask arrays and uh, we do not uh, want to have this operation of adding an element or removing an element rather what we try to do is replacing the values so that it's very fast for us when, when it comes to latency and we decrease the latency to as low as possible so i hope you really enjoyed this session and if you have any questions please do put those in comments and i will try my best to solve those thank you